The Jedi Order is one dedicated to maintaining peace throughout the galaxy, but sometimes some of the most terrifying and horrendous deeds are ones committed with hope of peace. The Jedi are a far from perfect order, and while they may appear as the righteous moral compass of those that reside in the galaxy, they too have committed terrible acts. One of the greatest weapons of the Sith is fear. It's an emotion that is difficult to destroy. In the days of the ancient Jedi, a talented former Jedi Knight fell to the dark side, corrupted by Sith spirits of dark lords that had long since passed. This boy, falling under the ways of power over peace, waged war against the Jedi, slaying his own master in single combat and killing hundreds of Jedi Knights over the war. The reign of this Dark Lord, although brief, would scar and alter the Jedi Order for centuries to follow. This Dark Lord's name was Exar Kun. Although he was ultimately defeated by the Jedi, the power of Kun struck the Jedi with an emotion the Order preaches to avoid, that of fear. Perhaps the most fearful and scarred of all the Jedi was the Jedi Master that had lost the most during the war with Exar. Not only did she lose her husband, Barristan, but Kun also killed her master in single combat, despite pleas to return to the light. This Jedi Master's name was Krinda Dre. Although becoming more distant from the Jedi Order following the war, Krinda's son Lucian was trained in the Jedi ways, and Krinda also trained another Force-sensitive due to her rare ability of foresight, which Krinda shared. This ability is one that allowed a practitioner to glimpse into the past, or the future, similar to the dreams that Anakin Skywalker would experience later in the timeline. Krinda trained her student as a Jedi Seer, also gathering other similarly gifted Jedi, in large part due to a premonition Krinda received that indicated that there was a group of Jedi among them capable of foiling any future plan of the returned Sith. This group that Krinda formed was known as the Jedi Covenant, and was only spoken of in the dark sections of the Jedi Temple. This group of Jedi also trained other Padawans of their own, and after some years passed, they approached the rank of Knight. As a final test for these students, the Jedi Padawans had to venture on their own to a planetoid known as the Rogue Moon, where the Force was extremely powerful. While awaiting the arrival of their students, the Jedi Covenant meditated and tapped into the Force due to it being very powerful. Not expecting anything significant, the Jedi were flooded with visions of fire and death as they saw the brutal murders of each member of the group. The Covenant also witnessed the entirety of the Jedi Order as well as the Republic burned to the ground. Each vision, although varied, shared one commonality. Each death that the Jedi saw was conducted by a dark figure in a crimson cloak. It's what we've been watching for, the Sith. The Sith are returning, in flames Lucian, the Order, the Republic, all in flames. The Jedi were naturally completely shocked, as their Padawans had all been gifted crimson cloaks for their mission to the Rogue Moon. Seeing this as a sign, the Covenant was drenched in fear. As the Jedi Padawans arrived from their trials, the Covenant became reclusive, meeting for hours and then days, deliberating the fate of the students. Krinda Dre, although hardened, refused to kill the students, citing she had already seen too much death. Her son Lucian, however, disagreed and made arrangements still for the Padawans to be executed, not wanting to lose his mother or the Jedi Order as an entirety. Lucian developed a cover story that explained one of the Jedi Padawans, after learning they failed their knighthood, would kill the other remaining students, and left with no choice, the Masters would execute him. With all preparations in place, the Covenant prepared to do what was necessary. The banquet commenced, and as the night moved on, the Jedi Masters prepared to do what was required for them for the Republic. When the time came, however, not all went according to plan. Although the Jedi successfully killed four of the Padawans, the Jedi Padawan to Lucian, named Zane, escaped the massacre, and after a lengthy foot chase, evaded the Jedi Masters. The Jedi Covenant now began to panic, as they believed now not only would the Sith return in the form of Zane, but that they themselves had created the Sith once again, and allowed the way of fear to consume them. Zane would later be blamed for the murders of the Jedi Padawans, and not only the Jedi, but all of the Republic was placed on high alert for his capture. Zane, however, would not give up that easily, resolving to clear his name of all wrongdoing and expose the Jedi Covenant for their crime. Eventually it was revealed the Sith would return, and would stem from the Jedi, but that it was not Zane who would be the source. Lucian's own master and failed Jedi, Hazen, revealed himself as a Sith Acolyte after taking control of the Jedi Covenant from within. Partially, the vision the Covenant experienced would come to pass, as both directly and indirectly, Hazen killed the members of the Covenant, with the exception of Lucian, who with the help of Zane, banded together to defeat Hazen. After Hazen's death, Lucian resolved to create a wholly pure Jedi Order, and attempt for the rest of his life to make penance for his great sin of the Jedi Massacre. Proving everyone wrong, Zane forgave his master. It was later hypothesized that what the Jedi Covenant saw was the rise of Darth Sidious' Sith Empire, as the Jedi would be destroyed along with the Republic, although this would not occur until nearly 4,000 years later. 
So that is why at one point in time, ancient Jedi chose to execute their students, being driven to a point of desperation after the evil they experienced at the hands of Exar Kun, and unwilling to go through it again. So what do you think of this event, and the great sin of the Jedi? A lot of the time, the Jedi are viewed as this good perfect order, and I kind of wanted to highlight one of the darkest moments in their history. If you enjoyed the video and feel it deserves it, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like, as it helps me out a great deal. If you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing to ensure you stay up to date with everything Star Wars related, from news, theories, and explanation videos. If you would like to interact with me directly, the best place to do so is on Twitter, at StupendousWave. Any future video suggestions are always welcome in the comments down below. Thanks so much as always for watching, may the force be with you, and have a great day.